what's going on everybody gunner here uh if you're new to the channel this is not my typical video uh you can see i am out here in the middle of nowhere and this has nothing to do with fly fishing i know it's kind of a big surprise uh, but my channel has to do with fly tying and fly fishing but really in the past two years i've grown far more interested and firearms, uh, especially as a father and as a husband and as the protector of my family, which I am taking more and more seriously. This is something that uh, I want to become more and more proficient at and, and more and more invested in, especially on the skill set side and tactics side. And it just seems like it'd be something fun to share with you guys. So without making this intro too long, I have had these rounds of 357 Magnum in my pocket and a speed strip for basically the entire summer. Uh, and the copper jacket on them is getting all worn and discolored and they've been exposed to a lot of sweat, heat, and humidity. So I figured we'd give these guys a proper send off here uh, and smack some cardboard and then talk about uh, a lot of the reasons why I like that SP-101, uh, even though it's kind of on the heavier side and there's a lot of cool things about it. And we'll just do a little sit down and talk. So let's get started. So we'll do some holster work, which I kind of suck at, but <laughs> we're gonna do some holster work. Uh, we're shooting Hornady Critical Defense, full size 357 Magnums out of the SP-101. So you can kind of get a gauge for how well it tames that Magnum load. Let's see how we did there. <laughs> little down and to the left. Come on, don't anticipate that. Dead on. Sweet, sweet. I'll take those. Little to the left. Let's see if we can up our game on the next five there. By any of this, I'm going to be covered in mosquito bites. <laughs> We got two right in the head, which is sweet. Again, we're pulling a little bit left. Some might call that anticipation. <laughs> Basically means I'm, I'm pushing into the gun a little bit. Luckily, they're not going down. It's just a little left, uh, but I'll try to figure that out and get that squared away here. I'm gonna go mark those so that I can shoot uh, five more at the chest and five more at the head, just so I don't get my holes confused. Not much improvement on the chest there. <laughs> Pulled one, two, three right across the top, and then we got two down here. But these grouped three right here within an inch right on the head. That's pretty sweet. And then pulled one left and must have, seeing as how I was pulling left, we'll just assume it missed right to the left there. But man, it's hard not to anticipate 357 Magnum. Got to work on it. So that is the Ruger. SP-101 357 Magnum 3-inch barrel. Uh, pretty sweet, stout little revolver. I mean, these things are heavy. Uh, I love the fact that it has a hammer, something I'll go over. I like the fact that it's heavy, not necessarily for carrying, but for shooting. 357 Magnum, that's kind of sweet. Uh, and then, I don't know, kind of barrel length's up to you, but I do know that the 3-inch balances really well and doesn't have so much snappiness to it, plus I can get all my fingers on there. Uh, but what I want to go over, this is not the first kind of uh, everyday carry revolver that I've owned and in fact I kind of progressed to this but I got into firearms during COVID right and so there wasn't a lot of options there just wasn't you go to a gun store there'd be like two or three revolvers there and I don't know why I just I like revolvers I wanted a revolver um, I think in hindsight maybe not in hindsight but in foresight I'll probably get you know a modern striker fire subcompact with you know 10 plus one nine millimeter but that's for a future video <clears throat> for right now this is what I carry um, but I ended up picking up first a Smith & Wesson Model 640, and the thing was beautiful. Uh, it was hammerless, had like a 2-inch snubby on it, wood handle, engraved to the 9. The thing was beautiful, chambered in 357 Magnum, and it was on this ultralight, lightweight frame. The thing was like 20 ounces. You could literally put it anywhere and conceal it just about anywhere. Really cool revolver, but every time I went out to the range, as a beginner, and I'm still very new to this, Man, I sucked at shooting that thing. I couldn't hit squat with that thing because it still had a revolver's trigger. It still had a fairly long, heavy trigger pull. You got to index the cylinder and bring the hammer back. And because it was so lightweight, 
every, during that trigger pull, you know, you have all this kind of waviness to that barrel as you're trying to drag that thing back and then get a nice clean little pull at the end. I found it very difficult and I sucked at shooting it. Now, to step that up one step further, shooting 357 Magnum out of a very light revolver sucks a lot. I remember the first shot that I shot out of it. I was just like surprised. I was so surprised that I didn't think I realized it was painful. Second shot, I knew it was painful. Third shot, I wanted to be done. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like I, I, I came to the range to practice. We're eating up 50 rounds. And it was I, every time I'd step up to the plate, it's like I had to work up the courage to grip that thing because it hurt to shoot. It was not fun. Um, so I ended up trading that gun in and buying this, the SB-101. Now this is kind of a medium frame. It's hefty. This is like 27, 28 ounces. It's not very light. Um, you're walking around with basically two pounds on your belt. Uh, I wanted a slightly longer barrel to kind of mitigate that muzzle snappiness to it. And I wanted a hammer. I'm just going to triple check again, but it's unloaded. But single action shooting, it's so fun for target because you don't have that heavy trigger pull. You have this super light, clean, clean and crisp little, and you can shoot targets very, very accurately, even at some range. Now, to paint a small scenario for you, if you're going to do everyday carry stuff, it's like, what if you're not the target? What if you're not engaged, but it's an active shooter situation, you're at the mall with your kid, and you can engage that bad guy or whatever it is from a distance like 20 30 yards man if you had an everyday carry revolver that was handleless good luck man you're gonna have to sit there and you're gonna have to stage that trigger really line it up and hope for the best but if you could just shoot single action from a distance like that's so critical to being able to land a long distance shot like having a light crisp clean trigger pull that's super helpful. So I really wanted a hammer. And then stepping up to that medium frame, like we shot 20 rounds at 357 Magnum. My hand doesn't hurt. I don't have nerve damage. I could keep shooting. I could shoot all day. I could shoot it for an hour or two or three. That'd be a lot of money. I would not probably do that. But you could because the weight of the gun mitigates the recoil that round. Is it still a lot of recoil? Yes. Obviously, I have quite a bit of anticipation for whatever reason moving to the left side of that target not down so much but for whatever reason going to the left and that's something I need to work on but man like it's fun to shoot a magnum class load out of a significantly weighted revolver Switched over to 38 to save some money. Made some new centers. That's a pretty sweet group. That's that's obviously 10 rounds. This one I cleaned up the pull left and down a little. These are all sweet. Look how tight that is. Nice and tight, nice and tight. Put some extra ones up in the head just for fun. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about just a, a few things to make everyday carry with a heavy revolver. Uh, kind of just accessible and, and comfortable doing because, well, it's something I struggled with the comfort wise for a year. <laughs> and that's a pretty big aspect of the willingness to carry every day is the comfort of it. Little show and tell here. Uh, for the holster, this happens to be an urban carry lock leather right hand draw. This is the model 220, which fits the SP 101 three inch barrel. Uh, it's got a cool little retention device in there. You can see it's adjustable, so you can uh, make it tighter or looser about how you want it. But, you know, as far as a leather holster that retains a gun, that's pretty sweet. Uh, the thing I like about it, it's got a really beefed up, because that retention's right there, it's really beefed up around the trigger guard. Nice, thick leather. You're never going to, you know, you're never going to be able to pull that trigger inside of that holster. Very, very safe. I also like that the holster comes up over the hammer spur because I don't like that hammer spur digging into my side if I'm carrying at four o'clock. This is with the clip and inside the waistband holster. So it's designed to be concealed. Um, 
the cool thing about that is that you can carry it at four or you can appendix carry. Uh, and so it gives you a little bit more versatility. Uh, I've had an outside the waistband holster for the past year because Minnesota is an open carry state. Uh, and I just much prefer this one for the versatility, being able to move either to appendix or four o'clock, being able to try both. Uh, typically outside the waistbands are only going to be kind of at that four o'clock with different cants and draw angles and stuff like that. Uh, but just a little clip makes it super easy to move around, uh, try different positions. And you're also not trying to thread that thing in and between, you know, your belt loops because all your belt loops are going to change. You know, every pair of pants has different loop positions. It's kind of really irritating when you have to thread your belt through a holster to navigate different pairs of pants that just clips in place. Uh, kind of the biggest thing that makes this comfortable is a everyday carry belt. Uh, this happens to be, uh, I think, the low-profile EDC belt from Warrior Poet Society. Uh, and you just order it in your pant size. It's Velcro, and so it's adjustable, you know, plus or minus two inches. So you order your pant size. You got two inches of leeway either way. There's no belt buckle. You just thread it through and Velcro it down. And the thing that's cool about that, one, this is stiffer than snot, right, which is really nice because it supports your gun so you don't have to strap that thing as tight as you can you know possibly strap a belt <laughs> which is really uncomfortable uh, but the thing that i like about it is it's micro adjustable you can move it a little bit or a little bit or a little bit versus the leather which you might have half inch or inch increments and well on top of that i'll show you my old leather belt but of course if you do like leather man they wear they wear over time they stretch they sag uh, I've never tried a leather gun belt. I don't know how much thicker and stiffer those are, uh, but this, you know, my old leather belts that I've had forever just because they don't really go bad. You know, I have like three or four of these things. None of them really made it comfortable at all. It always sag, dip below my butt cheeks, kind of pulling my pants down. You're always hiking your pants up, trying to keep that thing up on your waist because I'm a skinny guy. I don't really have anything to keep it on there other than my belt. And so if your belt's not up for the job, uh, everyday carry is really, really, uncomfortable uh, so a good gun belt again the warrior poet edc low profile belt plus a inside the waistband holster this happens to be the urban carry man have they made it so much more comfortable to carry and then i run a speed strip so i don't i have speed loaders you know this is your speed loader the wheels uh, that you just click them over and they release all the rounds um, those are cool but they're big and cumbersome I can load this thing with rounds. And you know that coin pocket in your jeans that nobody knows what they're used for? Check this out. Check this out. That little coin pocket, dun 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 dun, that holds rounds so flipping well. And you'll just have, you know, spare rounds right there. And that way they're not loose, they're not bouncing around, uh, they're not big or cumbersome, they're literally flush. And most pants have a pocket for it. I, I don't know what else that pocket's for if it's not for carrying revolver rounds. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that'll wrap up the video. Uh, just a few tips on everyday carry there. Uh, the Ruger SP-101 3-inch 357 Magnum. Uh, and thanks for joining me out on the range. For those of you who are my subscribers, uh, let me know if you enjoyed this. I got a bunch of guns that I would do this for that are just fun that I'm kind of, I don't know, smitten with and enjoy shooting and learning all this stuff about so let me know if you'd be into that and i'll make some more so thanks for watching guys uh, i guess i'll catch you in the next one or more likely a fly tying tutorial sometime this winter see ya